This book is structured in such a way that it can serve as an introduction to both the chip and semiconductor industry as well as the growth of the industry supply chains for anyone who is interested in either of those topics. It does so by relating the experiences of legendary figures like as Gordon Moore, Bill Noyce, and Andy Grove to the overall tale. It is also fascinating to read about the Soviet Union's attempts to establish their own semiconducting industry, which included the establishment of their very own Silicon Valley. It examines the circumstances that led to such a concentration of industry in Taiwan, which left the island vulnerable to an assault or blockade launched by China as well as to natural calamities. The final section of the book which discusses the dangers faced by TSMC and Taiwan, reads more like an editorial or an article from a local newspaper. Its description of the difficulties around the 2020 supply chain is one of the clearest insights I've read in a while, and I've read a lot. Chip Wars is a history of the conception and growth of microchips and integrated circuits, both of which are commonplace in modern society. The book was written by Chris Smith. The United States was the origin of much of the technology that is used today, however. While the United States is still a key supplier, Taiwan and Korea are also major participants. Moore's Law, which states that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit will nearly double about every two years, was largely followed by the expansion of the industry. An epic tale of the war that has been going on for decades to control what has become the most important resource on the planet, microchip technology, with the United States and China becoming more and more at odds with one another. It might come as a surprise to find that microchips have replaced oil as the most valuable resource in the modern world because of their scarcity. Chips form the basis for today's military, economic, and geopolitical might, all of which are layered on top of one another. Chips are used to power almost every aspect of modern life, from missiles to microwaves, as well as automobiles, cell phones, the stock market, and even the electric grid. Up until very recently, the United States of America invented and constructed the quickest chips and retained its lead as the number one superpower. However, the United States of America's advantage is in risk of fading, as players in Taiwan, Korea, and Europe are taking over manufacturing. Now, as the documentary Chip War demonstrates, China, which spends more money on chips than it does on any other product, is spending billions of dollars into an initiative to develop chips in order to catch up to the United States. The economic well-being and military dominance of the United States are both on the line. Chris Miller, an economic historian, describes how the semiconductor came to play such an important part in modern life. As well as how the United States came to be the dominant force in the design and manufacturing of chips, and how they adapted this technology to military systems. The United States of America was able to harness computer power more effectively than any other power, which contributed to its triumph in the Cold War as well as its dominance in the global military. In spite of this, China is quickly gaining ground in this area as well, with the country's chip-building goals and military modernization efforts working hand in hand. The United States of America has contributed not just to a worldwide chip scarcity but also to a new Cold War with a superpower opponent that is keen to close the gap. This is because America has allowed critical components of the chip building process to slip out of its grip. Chip War is an enlightening, timely, and fascinating book that demonstrates that in order to make sense of the current state of politics, economics, and technology, we must first understand the vital role that is played by chips. This book makes the case that understanding the role that chips play is essential.